Hello friends, in case you're new here, my name is Lee and I like to take photos. Sometimes in places that aren't the easiest to get to or aren't the most hospitable, like Yellowstone National Park in the winter, <laughs> which I went to last month. This video won't be about the photography though. I do have other videos about that. So stay tuned, even if you aren't a photographer. In this video, I will share with you how I stayed warm or at least not super cold <laughs> during this trip. Uh, the high temperature during the day at Yellowstone may only get up to freezing, so your clothing is very important, whether or not you wanna spend time in the snow doing photography or anything else. First, for a little bit of background, I went on this trip to make a photo book, and I'll put a link to the video where I launched that down in the description of this video in case you're interested, but the trip was something that I had wanted to do for a long time, but I'd been too intimidated because of the weather. Yellowstone in winter is pretty extreme. I mean, the only way into or out of the interior of the park is by snow coach or snowmobile. So <laughs> this was a trip that meant a lot to me personally as well as professionally. And also um, you'll notice as I'm going through this that I don't mention any wool or down. I do know that those things are out there and often suggested for cold environments, but I am vegan so I choose to use all synthetic gear there's nothing weird though, I promise. <laughs> I, I did want to mention that uh, early in this video though because I had a tough time finding information on certain items. So hopefully this video will help the other vegan types out there. Okay, I will go through everything that I wore on a typical day in the park. I didn't wear exactly the same thing every day, at least not all the items, but it was pretty much a variation on the same thing. I'll tell you brands and such. Some of my gear is new or new-ish, and I'll put links to those things that I can down below, but some of my stuff is old. For those things, I'll at least describe the items so that you might be able to find something like it. And last, Raymond and I wore very similar things, but I'll tell you along the way where his clothes deviated from mine. Let's start with the base layer. First, I wore a pair of tights. I have a couple that are fleece lined, which were the best. I purchased these this past winter from Lululemon and they are no longer available, but they were called Toasty Tech Tight 2. Raymond wore some similar Under Armour tights that we picked up at a sporting goods store. Uh, I also had a similar pair that I got from Costco that were Adidas and by the way, much less expensive. On top, I wore another Lululemon item. I like these long sleeve Swiftly Tech shirts. I like a closer fitting shirt as my base layer because it prevents wind from sneaking its way up and making me cold. I know the common wisdom is not to wear anything tight, but these have worked for me for years and I have several of them. I also like that the sleeves are super long and I can loop my thumb in and then put my gloves on and my wrists aren't exposed. I happen to have super long arms, so I can't typically use the thumb holes in shirts, but I can in these. Raymond typically wore something pretty similar as his base layer, usually a short sleeved Under Armour shirt. My last base layer item is a pair of tech socks. I like right socks. I wore the quarter length ones and these help my feet breathe while also providing some warmth. Raymond only wore one pair of socks. He has a bunch of these REI brand Cool Max mid-weight hiking socks, the tall ones. For the next layer, let's stay on the feet. I wore a pair of tall hiking socks. I have a bunch of different kinds ranging in price, but these are darn tough brand and are the Cool Max version. Moving up, Raymond and I both wore snow pants. We got them in preparation for this trip and both of us were really glad we made the investment. Mine were the North Face Freedom Insulated Snow Pants and Raymond's were the Columbia Ridge to Run 2 Snow Pants. We spent a good 30 minutes in the dressing room at REI trying on pants and squatting and bending to make sure we had a full range of motion and I'm really glad that we did because they were comfortable and they definitely kept us warm. It was really nice to just be able to plop myself down into the snow when I needed to get the low angle shots. On top, I wore either a vest, this one is an old Prima Loft one from REI, or this REI Polar Tech sweatshirt. It is over a decade old, but I have seen similar items around from time to time from different brands. Raymond typically wore some sort of heavier weight, long sleeved tech shirt. And then over that, we both wore coats. 
both of her jackets are pretty old, but they're both three-in-one coats. They have a fleece lining and a waterproof, or at least very water-resistant outer layer. Mine has a great hood that you can zip on and off too. My coat is from Eddie Bauer. I got it at their outlet store probably about 10 years ago, but I do know that they still make similar jackets. And Raymond's coat is from L.L. Bean, but it was actually his father's, so it's probably at least 30 years old. Now for shoes. I had waterproof hiking boots, which I put foot warmers in each morning. These type of chemical warmers last a long, long time, but they do take a little bit of time to warm up, so I like to get them activated and in place before we even left the lodge in the morning. My shoes were not insulated themselves, so the foot warmers really did help my toes stay warm enough. These are the Ultra Lone Peak 4 Mid RSMs. Great shoes, but I do wish that I had gotten the low top version, only because I don't like boots. Anyway, I also added gaiters. These are the Outdoor Research Rapid Gaiters. They add a layer of warmth and also prevent snow from getting into your shoes. Now Raymond also wore waterproof hiking boots. His boots are the Merrill Capra Glacial Ice Mid WP Winter Hiking Boots. They are not vegan, but he adores them because they keep his feet really warm. We also both wore something around our necks. I used a buff. It keeps my neck just warm enough, but I still have a full range of motion and it isn't too bulky. I can also pull it up over my face and mouth when needed. And Raymond typically wore either a regular buff or a small scarf. Now for gloves. I wore a combination of two pairs of gloves. The first layer I wore only when needed. They are a pair of gloves that are head brand and they have the touch finger capability, which is nice. They are not too bulky so that I can use a camera pretty easily with them. I picked them up at Costco this past winter. Over those, or by themselves if I could get away with it, I wore a pair of Eddie Bauer Polar Tech fingerless gloves that have a mitten cover. These are another super old item, but I believe they still carry something like this. I also added hand warmers when needed. I activated them in the morning with the toe warmers and tucked the hand warmers into my pockets for when I needed them. And Raymond typically wore a pair of thin gloves as a liner and then wore a pair of Burton ski gloves over them. Last for headwear. I typically wore this old beanie. It's nothing special, it's just from Target. I like it because it is for running so it still allows my head to breathe. And if I needed more warmth or protection from the snow, I put my hood up. Raymond typically wore a combination of a ball cap and a fleece ear warmer. All right, that's it. It is certainly a process to get dressed in the morning when you know you will be in sub-freezing temperatures all day, but it's definitely worth it. We were both able to stay pretty comfortable out snowshoeing or even just standing in the snow watching bison do bison things. I also have several videos that Raymond and I made about some of the photography and videography gear that we used on the trip, and I will put links to those in the description in addition to that book release video. And I do have the next big bookmaking trip already planned. It is a completely unique adventure that you actually have an opportunity to join us on. It will be another cold weather endeavor. It is to Yellowknife in the Northern Territories of Canada to see the Aurora Borealis and learn how to photograph it from one of the best, Jose Francisco Salgado. There are still a couple of spots left. So if you want to learn more about that trip, I will put a link to that in the description as well. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. But before you take off, I would love to hear what your go-to system is for staying warm. Let us all know down in the comments, what, is your, what are your favorite pieces of cold weather gear?